In the past two years, I've made over $100,000 with the Amazon Influencer Program. And that's why I'm making this video. Because in that same time period, I've helped over 1,000 people start making money with the Amazon Influencer Program. And of those 200, I know at least 10 that have made over $75,000 themselves with the Amazon Influencer Program. This video is going to be a no holds barred, 100% complete guide to the program as I know it to be true. I promise to not gatekeep any information and I have a special bonus for people who stay all the way to the end. In this video, you're going to learn how to get approved, how to avoid some of the common pitfalls when it comes to the on-site process, how I make my videos convert so that I keep placement at the top of the carousel, the process I use to keep finding winning products to review, how I get free products sent to me almost daily by Amazon sellers, and a little guide on all of the special bonus programs that Amazon puts out. And if you're starting from zero, this is the absolute fastest way to make your first thousand dollars online. So having said that, let's dive in. Now, before I get into the step-by-step -step process of how to actually work this program, I wanted to prove some common myths and go over some frequently asked questions so that we're all on the same level playing field. And first and foremost, I want to dispel the myth that you can actually buy an account to get accepted as an Amazon influencer. As you know, you need an active, engaging social account to get approved as an Amazon influencer in the first place. They don't just open up the program to anybody with an account. Now, in the early days of the program, you may have been able to get away with this, but some people perpetuate this to be true, but right now it's a flat out lie. And I brought an Instagram account up here on the screen. What people would do is they would go out and they would buy an account like this. It would be a generic faceless dog account. Uh, they would do no work in actually creating the uh, the social media content. This would be, you know, you'd go on onto a social media site where you can buy and sell accounts. They'd buy an account like this, attach it to their Amazon influencer account, and they would get approved. Okay, you could potentially get approved with an account like this, but you will fail on site 100% of the time. Because when we get to it later on, on site is an actual human that goes in and looks at the account. And if they don't see your face attached to the social media account, they will not approve you as an on site influencer. Which brings me to question number two Do I have to show my face to be an Amazon influencer? And the answer to that question now is absolutely yes, you have to. In the early days of the program, you could probably get around it because I didn't have too many influencers. Now they can be selective and they want to see you, your face on there. So if you're trying to do this faceless, and again, another early technique that sometimes is still being taught today that no longer works is to build faceless TikTok content. I brought another TikTok account up here on the screen to show you. Sometimes they'll go into the manifestation niche. Basically, it's all kinds of posts that are, it's just an affirmation with a sound and they'll keep posting it. And this is an account that you own, you didn't buy, but there's no face attached to it. It's the same thing as the dogs. It's just generic people, right? Amazon wants to see real people with real personalities on their program. So if you build this type of account, you are wasting your time. Again, you might get past the initial approval into the program, but you'll get denied on site 100% of the time. I see it all the time in the Amazon Influencer subreddit. People have questions about why they're getting denied and I go, I look at their videos and their videos are fine. Their, their product videos are fine, but I always click to the social and it's always an account that's something like this, somebody who doesn't wanna show their face. So if you don't wanna show your face, Stop here, this is not for you. You cannot be an Amazon influencer. All right, the next thing that I see that a lot of people lie about and a lot of things that are being taught that is absolutely going to get you kicked out of the program is if you go and you film inside of stores. Do not, do not, do not film your reviews inside of stores that is breaking the terms of service. So this is something, again, some people get away with it for a while, but eventually Amazon finds out and you'll wake up one day to having your Amazon account banned and deactivated because again, you were in stores. It's happened to a couple very prominent Amazon influencers and it's gonna happen to you eventually. So just don't do it. Do not film in stores, film everything in your house. And that kind of leads me into my next thing. Next question I get all the time. Can I just buy this stuff on Amazon, review it and then return it? And the answer to that also is no. You cannot buy and return stuff because that will flag your Amazon account and their algorithm. They'll actually shut down your Amazon shopping account along with your influencer account if you're doing that. So if you buy something that you really don't need but you're doing it just for the purposes of a review, you need to figure out a way to get rid of it. I will go over some different ways later on in the video, but you need to figure out a way to dispose of it that is not returning it to Amazon. But you shouldn't have to buy anything to get started anyway. I'll show you again later on the video. There's literally hundreds of items in your house right now that you could do a video on and start making money. Now, speaking of Amazon accounts, there's a couple of questions about Amazon accounts that always come up with people that I help with this program, and they are as follows. Number one, I'm already an Amazon associate. Does that automatically qualify me as an influencer? 
No, you actually have to go and sign up as an influencer separately, uh, log in to your Amazon account that's already on the uh, on the influencer, so it'll link the two of them up. But over here on the screen, I'm actually showing you here, this is the Amazon influencer signup page. It looks almost identical to the associate signup page, except the button on the influencer page is blue. If you see a yellow button, you're on the associate page. That's not the right signup form. It has to be blue. And once you click sign up, it will ask you to hook up your existing Amazon account or you can create a new Amazon account. Which again, leads me to the next question. Do I have to create a new Amazon account to do this? And the answer to that is no. If you have an Amazon account that you've been shopping on for years, feel free to use it. The influencer is not going to affect that particular account. However, it will make your life infinitely easier because it will feed your shopping orders directly into your feed when you go to tag stuff in your influencer account. So it'll make it infinitely convenient. But if you want to keep them separate, you can create a brand new Amazon account, brand new uh, work email address. You can do that as well, become an influencer. You do not have to have any shopping or purchase history to become an influencer. So if you wanna make it separate, you can make it separate, that's fine. Another question I get all the time is, are people sellers? I, I'm, an, I'm an Amazon seller, I have an Amazon storefront. Can I be an influencer? Will it affect the influencer? The answer to that, again, is no. They are all completely different departments. You can sign up to all of them. If you have an Amazon seller account, you can sign up with an Amazon influencer account on the same email address, on the same login. Uh, only thing is that I wouldn't review the same products that you're selling. There's no rule against it, but for me, it kind of just feels like a conflict of interest and Amazon may frown upon it. So just as long as you don't review your own products, you're fine as a seller. And then lastly, what countries does this work in? Now, as of the making of this video, Amazon has videos on the influencer program for the US, Canada, the UK, and Australia. And that is it. If you live outside of those four countries, you can become an Amazon influencer, but you have to apply to either the US, UK, Canada, or Australian programs from your own country. Now, there's no guarantee that it's going to work, although I've seen thousands of people actually make it work. The hardest thing you're gonna run into is uh, item compatibility and item availability, because what's sold in your country might not necessarily be sold in the US site, or what's sold in the US is not sold in your country. But again, you can do it, but there's no guarantees. You're kind of operating in a gray area. But again, I've seen people do it. All right, so with all that out of the way, let's dive right into my computer. We'll go through the approval process step by step. I'll show you exactly what you need to do. First thing that we're gonna do here is go to the Google Amazon Influencer Program. The first link that pops up is gonna put you on a screen just like this, the blue sign up button that is here. Now, if you already have a social media account with a fair amount of followers, a fair amount of engagement, it might just be a matter of filling out a form and you're gonna be in. And the social networks that qualify for this are TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, or Facebook business page. Now, Facebook business pages, I think, are the hardest ones in addition to YouTube channels to actually get a qualifying account for because they take so much work to build. But if you have a TikTok or an Instagram with good content and good engagement, you're probably gonna get in because following size does not matter when it comes into this. I'll talk into this in a bit, but uh, we've actually had people get into this program with only six followers, but their content was really, really good. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna go over to the, the Amazon Influencer Program. You're gonna click the blue sign up button and it's gonna take you to a screen where essentially you can use your existing customer account for Amazon Influencer or you can create a new account that's here and you're gonna actually hook up your social media account to the Amazon Influencer to go ahead and apply. And it's important to know that this particular approval is not done by a human. There's a bot that's gonna go in and it's gonna look at all of your analytics and make a decision instantly when you submit the form. The approval process is actually two steps. So there is one, the actual approval to become an Amazon influencer to get your Amazon storefront, but there's also a second on-site approval where an Amazon employee is gonna go in, they're gonna look at your store, they're gonna look at your social media, and they're gonna make the determination manually whether or not they wanna let your content appear on Amazon's product pages. And when that happens, you want to get past the on-site approval process. It's gonna be some of the easiest money that you've ever made on the internet. But that doesn't happen right away. There is a little bit of a wait. We'll get into that in a second. Talking about first approval, getting past the bot to get your Amazon storefront set up. We're not talking about on-site. That's later in the video. So again, we're gonna go through here. You're gonna set up your, uh, use your existing customer account. Once you click your account, I've already filled this out. So I already have an influencer page here. You're gonna actually hook up your qualifying social media, and then it's gonna make a determination on the spot whether or not you are eligible. If you have an active social media account, you're probably eligible. Great, you're there. Cool, you're smooth sailing. You can skip to the next part of the video. But if you've never had social media before, or you're having a hard time getting approved because the denial on this page, 
it's okay. That's what this part of the video is gonna show you how to do. All right, so what I've done here is I've pulled up my TikTok account here and don't be fooled by the 140,000 followers. 140,400 of them are unnecessary. You don't need them because the number one thing that Amazon is looking for when making the determination as to whether to approve an account or not is engagement, okay? You want content that people are going to share, people are gonna comment on, people are gonna like, people are gonna watch all the way to the end. They don't care about followers, they don't care about views, they care about engagement. Okay, so what we're gonna do to help check engagement, because again, you might have an account that you're trying to get approved with, and you might have 30 or 40 or 50,000 followers, and you can't get past the bot. You might not have to actually create a new account, you might not actually have to create any more content. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of our lowest engaging content, and we're gonna we're gonna cut it right off the bottom, and hopefully that should be enough to get approved. Pull up my TikTok account here on desktop, and there's a free Chrome extension called VidIQ that you can go ahead and you can actually download. I'm gonna bring it up here on the screen. I'll actually put a link to it down below in the description. I'm actually gonna put a link to all of the resources that I talk about in this video down in the description if you wanna go take a look at them. VidIQ here, we're gonna install this into our Chrome browser. It is a free extension. That's actually going to go ahead and you'll see on the bottom here, it has all of our engagement rate on all of our videos. You'll see it's 4%, 6%, 4%, 7, 2, 2, 4. As your account gets larger and your view counts get bigger, it's harder to maintain a big engagement rate. Now, if you're a smaller creator, this could work in your favor because you you want the average of your videos to be somewhere in the five-ish percent range or higher, get past the initial bot and get past the initial approval. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go through, if you have an account and you can't get in, you're gonna go ahead and find all of these videos that are under 5%, you're gonna go and you're gonna private them. Don't delete them because that's gonna hurt your TikTok account. Instead, what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and private them. What that's gonna do is that's gonna take that video out of your public facing analytics. You might be left with like 10 videos, but they're all gonna be 5% and higher, and your average engagement on your account is gonna go way up. Sometimes that might be enough to get past the initial approval here for your Amazon influencer account. But I should say this doesn't happen instantaneous. So what you're gonna do is go through, prune all the bottom, private all of the bottom performing content, and then wait 24 hours and go ahead and apply again. I've seen this happen more times than not, where that second application goes right through and the person gets their storefront. And if it doesn't work, on the first approval, there is no limit to the amount of times that you can apply to the program. I have people who have applied daily for 50 or 60 straight days to eventually get into the program. So what you wanna do then, you want to create engaging, specific content that people are gonna like, people are gonna share. I actually did a more in-depth video on it. I'm gonna put a card right up here if you wanna go take a look at it. But create good content on a daily basis doesn't matter what it's about. Please do not create product review content. Do not create make money content. Do not create religious content. Do not create inflammatory political content. Literally anything else, keep it middle of the road, keep it very vanilla, but keep it engaging, keep it relatable. If you do that, people are gonna comment on it and eventually you're going to get in. Focus on engagement. Ask people to comment. Ask people what their favorite old song was. Make nostalgia type content. Talk about when you were a kid. Talk about toys that you don't see anymore. Talk about Mandela effect, all collective memories. These are all things that always get engagement and they always go viral and they are fun for you, the creator, to make. Because you get to talk about all your cool childhood toys, all the cool trends from 20 years ago when you were a kid and Amazon loves this stuff. Audience loves this stuff, it's highly engaging. So if you create a new account, my suggestion to you is to create something that talks about nostalgia, music, again, something universal, not something that is too horribly niche. Now, if you do that, I need you to stick with it and post the video every single day for at least 45 days. Now, again, I've had some people who get approved with six followers and they've had three videos on their account, but all three of those videos were really good and they went kind of super viral on the first shot. Stick at it for 45 days every day and apply to Amazon every single day. If you make good content, you're probably gonna get into the account. And when you do, you're gonna see a screen that looks something like this. I'll put it right here on the screen. And once you see this particular screen, you're past the bot, Congratulations, you're an official Amazon influencer, but don't stop posting, this is only half the battle. We have to go on and we have to get approved for on-site commissions next. 
All right, so once you've gotten past that first spot, you've gotten the initial approval, it's now time to set up your Amazon store and we're gonna set things in motion to get that second on-site approval process. This is where most people are gonna get tripped up, so this is where I want you to pay the most attention. All right, once you get your storefront, you're gonna hop into here, you're gonna just have your edit profile, which is gonna give you your display name, your bio, and then all your social media links. The social media that's actually got you approved is gonna be grayed out. You're not gonna be able to change that one, but you can add other social media links if you want. Kind of act as a fail safe uh, in case something happens to either the TikTok account or the Instagram account that you got approved with. What I like to do is I like to pick the same profile photo or something that shows your face clearly on social media and also shows your face clearly over on Amazon. So this way, when the human goes and looks at it, they know it's the same person on both accounts. So that's gonna be a big on-site approval first kind of pass the sniff test. Okay, so here you can see we've got my face here in this photo. If we go ahead, we click over to my TikTok account, which I used to get qualified with. You're gonna see my face up here. And then you're also, if you scroll down, you're gonna see me in all of the content. This is clearly the same person who made the social as the person who made the Amazon account. That's pretty much all that's required to get on site when they go and check as far as social media is concerned. So many people get this wrong. So again, you wanna have continuity between your profile photos and make sure it's in your content. And do not stop posting. I see a lot of people here also, once they get approved, they stop posting on social media and then the person goes in uh, and they go do the on-site approval check and they see that the person hasn't posted in two weeks, they deny them. So keep posting, keep active on social media. But you go in, get your profile picture, you can put up a banner photo, you don't have to, it really doesn't matter what's here. You can make something in Canva in five or 10 minutes, update it there, it does not matter what is here. Now, once you upload your banner, you have to upload three of your videos to get put into the queue for on-site approval. So what you have to do here on desktop, I always do the first three at least on desktop because everything here is, is easy. You can do it on a phone, but it's not, it's not as friendly. So when you're logged into your store, you'll be logged in, you'll see this here, you'll see the manage content, go to video. And you're gonna come over here. I have a couple extra buttons I'll talk about later in the video. But when you log in, if you are not, you wanna look at this actually, you wanna look at this box up here, the earned on-site commissions. When you are first set up your account, you're gonna see a blue padlock here with a zero out of three videos uploaded next to it. It's gonna be right up here in the top right. If you see that there, you're not on-site yet. You still need to create your three videos. You're gonna upload them by clicking this yellow upload video button and you're gonna upload videos from your computer into there. You're gonna upload three product reviews. Once you get your three product reviews updated, you're gonna see there's a little blue bar that should fill up that goes three of three. That's gonna put you in queue for a human to look at all of your videos and look at your social media account. Now it's gonna tell you it only takes 48 hours for them to make a decision, but I've seen it swell to as much as 60 days on a wait, depends on how hammered they get with applications, or if Amazon has a bunch of people off that day, because it literally is a human clicking in and checking everything. Sometimes they get backed up. I've seen it as little as three days, I've seen it as much as 60 days. You're just gonna have to be patient once you get your videos uploaded, and then just wait. Now you're also gonna see when you get them uploaded. When you upload one, you're gonna see it's gonna say pending here. The next day it's gonna come in, it's gonna say published. Published here does not mean published on site. Published here means published on your storefront. It's a very big distinction. So published on your storefront and published on site up here in the top right are two different things. Make sure you understand. So you wanna create three videos, make sure they all go published, and then you're gonna wait until you're going to get the unlock. When you get unlocked, you're going to see something looks like this on screen. When you log in, it's gonna be right in the middle of your screen. You're also gonna get an email that says additional placements unlocked. The email is gonna look something like this. When that happens, you're gonna be approved for on-site. But let's talk about the videos themselves that go in and how to improve your chances of getting that uh, notification that you're approved. So the first thing that you're gonna do to get approved for on-site is number one, only make three videos, okay? You're required to make three, only make three. If you make more than three, you're giving Amazon additional chances to find something to deny you for. You create five or six videos, all five or six videos have to be perfect for you to get the, the approval. If you make three, you only need three to be right. Now, when it comes to choosing the products to make those videos on, I want you to pick three super random, super generic items. They don't have to be niched, but they don't, they can't be anything like weapons or knives or any health supplements or anything like that. You wanna pick something, I think I picked a broom, a computer mouse, 
And I think I picked a pen as one of my three generic items. You wanna pick something that you can't make any health claims about, something that can't be construed as a weapon, and something that's not in the kind of not safe for work adult toy category. Stay away from those categories, especially on your first three. It's also important that you make the product the star of the video and not you. I know we're influencers, we wanna be on camera, we wanna be the star of the show all the time, but Amazon does not care about us. For instance, if I were making a video about this can of Coke, what I would do is I would not be on camera far away like I am here on YouTube going here, let's talk about the can of Coke. Instead, what I would do is I would turn the camera around have the Coke front and center on the screen and talk about the product with me in the background. You want the product to be the star of the show, not you. Again, something I see a lot when people go to get approved, they become the star and it's all about them and they talk about the product. They don't show the product until about 10 or 15 seconds in. That's not gonna get you approved. Also, what to include or rather not include inside the videos when you make them. You do not wanna have any other products in the shot. What I'll do is I'll clear a table and then have it include a shot that it only has that particular item on the table and I'll be talking about it. You don't want anything else in the shot to distract the viewer. You also don't wanna have any barcodes visible on boxes. Okay, this is something that'll trip up the bot. It'll get the video taken down because they think it's personal information. So what I do is I actually take a piece of uh, blue painter's tape. I just put, uh, if, I, if I go, to, if I'm doing an unboxing video, you don't have to do an unboxing for your first three. But if I'm doing an unboxing video and there's a barcode on the box, what I'll do is I'll just take blue painter's tape, put it over the barcode, and that solves that problem. You also don't wanna have any visible children. If you're gonna be doing a kid's toy as a review, don't show your kids using it. That's also gonna get it taken down because for child safety. Show yourself talking about it from the parent's point of view. Also, don't put music, don't put sound effects, don't put subscribe to my channel, don't put like and follow in any of these videos. This is not YouTube, this is not Instagram, this is not TikTok, it's Amazon. Amazon does not want you taking other people off the platform. So if you put any of those things in there, music, captions, calls to actions, like and follow, like and subscribe, they're gonna deny your on site. Do not put them in there. Instead, I want you to follow this simple framework in your videos. And to demonstrate the simple framework that I'm gonna ask you to use in your videos, I'm actually gonna review this drill. Now, as you can see, I have a clear table, a clear space for me to actually put this. It's free of distractions. And what I'm gonna do here is I want to introduce the product first. Again, the product is the star of the show, not you. Notice how I'm holding it in front of me when I'm here for the video. I'm not gonna go, hey, I wanna talk about this drill. You're gonna hold it right up here and go, hey, I wanna talk about this Ryobi drill and my experience with it over the past 10 years of owning it. You wanna tell people what you're gonna be reviewing, show it right up front and talk about why they should listen to your review. Now, if it's not something that you've owned for 10 years, don't tell them that you've owned it for 10 years. If you've had it for a week, be like, look, I got this thing a week ago. Honestly, I used it for a project. I'm gonna tell you my thoughts over using it for the past week. Be honest in your reviews. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tripod and put it in front of the table and I have a mount here on my tripod. It's actually magnetic to the back of my phone case. I shoot everything here with my phone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the camera around and put it here and have just the product itself in frame on a clean table. Again, no other products in the shot. What I'm gonna do here again, I've already told them what the product is and how long I've had it in that opening shot. You can do the opening shot here and again, if it's on a it's on a tripod, I have both hands here free to do a demonstration. Uh, what I would do then is I would go through over and talk about what comes in the box. So that's another a common question that shoppers have when they go on Amazon. And again, the, the purpose of these videos is to help people make an informed shopping decision. So think about that when you're making your review with your first three reviews. You're gonna use your product and talk about, all right, if I buy this, what's included in the box? I would talk about how it came with the drill, it came with the battery, and then I would also talk about how it came with the charger as well. Talk about how it's a 30 minute charger and then it plugs right into any wall outlet that is there. If it doesn't come with a charger, tell people that. Tell them if it doesn't come with something that they're gonna have to buy extra. There is no worse feeling than actually buying something, a tool you think you need for a project you're gonna get done this weekend only to realize you needed to buy this extra thing and now you gotta wait two more days to start. It's an awful feeling. Like again, for instance, this drill here, did not come with any bits. So I would tell people that they might actually have to buy a bit set 
And this little universal, I think this was like 20 bucks at the time I bought it years ago, but this is something that would make a good compliment for this. So not only is it gonna help the shopper and tell them that you know they're not gonna buy a drill without any bits, you also might make a second sale on the actual accessory itself. But again, I know I said don't have any extra products. This is a compliment that they might have to buy related to this particular one here. Now, you also want you to go over, talk about the build quality. I would talk about how comfortable the, uh, the rubber grip is. If it was starting to wear after all the use, I would tell people about where all the common wear items are. Um, and then just talk about how it's held up. If you can, if you can demonstrate a product. Now, obviously I'm not saying I would drill a hole in my wooden table, but I would go ahead, talk about the switch here for the low and the high speed, the trigger, talk about the light that's over here that will light wherever you're working. Go through there, it's really simple on these. Again, you just wanna help shoppers make an informed decision about a product. So introduce what the product is, how long you had it, and why they should listen to you. Talk about what comes in the box, something they might have to buy, how it's built, how it's held up in your terms of ownership. And then I always like to make up, end with a recommendation on whether or not I would buy it again. And if I tell somebody, hey, I would buy this again, that's essentially saying you should go and buy it right now. But the other bonus which you can do to make this video super, super helpful is go into the frequently asked questions that are usually at the bottom of every Amazon description, pick one and answer it. If you're over here on the actual Amazon listing here for the Ryobi drill, go onto here where you see uh, product details. You can come into here, click on that. It's gonna bring you all the way down through the product details, product information, and then into the reviews are right down here where it says specific info. So we're gonna find another listing that actually has Q and A's. This one's a relatively new listing, probably because they added they added this little holster here for the side to make it a new listing. We're gonna go find the official Ryobi listing. I'll show you there. Give me a second to do some movie magic. And what's gonna happen here is I've actually got, you'll see the, the top reviews here. People will talk about it being helpful. You look for helpful stuff, but they actually have the Q and A. The Amazon's actually moved the way it looks since I've last checked this out. They'll put it right here. So for instance, will it work with a Ryobi Mr. Fan? Can we charge it on a Ryobi charger? Yes. So you might see some of these questions here in the format in the Amazon listing itself. You might have to do a little bit of digging like I did. They used to put it right next to the reviews. But again, Amazon's always testing. They always move out, change the interface. Make sure you answer a couple of those common questions in your review, add that to it, and that's gonna help your video convert a little bit better. And when you're making those videos, it's important to make sure that you have good light, good audio, and you use a tripod so the camera's not all shaky. And when I say good light and good audio, I really, it doesn't have to be a full studio setup like this. It's literally just my phone on a tripod with the lights on and no shadows in the room. And for 99% of cases, your phone's microphone is enough to pass over on Amazon. There's no need to invest in any kind of nice microphone to go ahead and do this. However, if you really want to use a dedicated microphone to do this, I'm gonna recommend there's a little wireless lavalier mic that plugs right into the bottom of my phone. I got it on Amazon. You can also review it and earn commissions on it. So essentially it becomes free, but this is something that plugs right in. It's plug and play. I put this on my chest and I'm able to actually use it if I my videos, but I find myself using this in probably less than 10% of my videos. I just use my phone mic most of the time. Now, once your three videos up on Amazon, you'll see the three videos here. You'll probably see them sitting pending here come back the next morning, that most of them will be to published. If they go to rejected, they will give you a rejected reason. Typically it'll say something like personal information. Once you've filmed your initial three reviews, you're gonna upload them to your Amazon storefront. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to your storefront, go here to your manage content, click on video, that's gonna bring you into the manage video section. And what you're gonna do here, you're gonna click this little yellow button here that says upload video. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead, upload a video from your computer. If you wanna airdrop them from your phone to your computer, I use Google Photos, so my phone goes right to Google Photos and I download them from Google Photos to my computer. How you get them on your computer does not matter. But what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna upload, this is out of noise canceling headphones that I did. You're gonna bring over to here, you're gonna title it 3M Work Tunes, uh, the name of the product, something like, honest review or brutally honest thoughts. You wanna keep it really, really generic, really, really vanilla, and make sure you have the title of the product here in the title. When that's done, the thumbnail doesn't really matter. It's starting to matter though. So it's gonna pull a frame from the video for your thumbnail, but if you wanna replace it, put it with something more YouTube-ish, that's fine. It's not gonna hurt you. It can only help you at this point in the game. So when that's done, all you have to do now is tag the product. Put the tag here and what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're tagging the correct product. So what I would do here is I, I go into search and I can go 3M work tunes. Go here, search. 
And there's gonna be a bunch of different listings here for the product itself. More times than not, usually the most popular version of the product is the one that you're gonna have. But this one here looks like it has a antenna. This one does not. But to be 100% sure what I'm going to do, if you bought the item on Amazon, you're gonna go open a new browser tab, go to amazon.com. And what you're going to do is you're gonna search up your product. 3M Worktunes, find the product that is there. I think it was this one here, because I've got the same one, it's yellow, it could be gray, there's probably a different color or something that's there. Again, you wanna go through, these I've actually had for a couple of years. Reviewing an older product, find the one that is the, the newest version that is the closest related. But you're going to here, pull up the actual listing that's here, and then up in the top, you're gonna to see amazon.com. It's gonna say Worktunes Digital Headphones, and you'll see this little DP and then the slash little grouping of letters and numbers here. That's the Amazon ASIN number. That's the stock number of the product that is unique to the particular product. So you'll find that, you'll copy it, come over here, and then what you can do is you can paste that number right there and hit search, and it's gonna bring up that listing by itself. That's the one that you want to tag. Again, you don't wanna get the video is unrelated to the product rejection reason, because that usually happens when you tag the wrong product. So make sure you tag the right product, use that there, hit the select, and then when you're done, hit done. So now we've got the video uploaded, we've got the product tagged, the thumbnail again, we pulled out the generic thumbnail from the video. Then we're gonna hit submit. You'll see now how it says processing. Tomorrow morning it will show published. I'm actually gonna delete this one because this one's already in my store. And you can't post double videos. So we're gonna go processing, that's there. We're gonna delete this one here. When I come tomorrow, that will be showing as published. When that one shows as published, remember you're gonna have a padlock up here in the top right with a little blue bar. That blue bar is gonna fill up to three out of three when you upload your three videos and you tag your three products and it goes on there. At that point, you're just in a waiting pattern. Do not post anything else to your Amazon store. Do not stop posting on your social. Keep going. However, something that I recommend everybody does while they're waiting for their on-site review is start building up a bank of review videos. So even though you can't post them on Amazon, start putting them into a folder on your computer so that when you get that approval, you can dump all your videos on day one because there's no limit to the amount of daily uploads you can do. I personally have uploaded 100 videos on a single day before. One of my business partners did 117. It's possible and you're not gonna get penalized for it. So while they're looking at your account, go ahead, just bank reviews as if you are already approved. Again, don't post them on Amazon just yet though. And just to recap the whole on-site process, what you wanna do, Again, make sure that you're creating social media content with your face on a type of pop topic that's not too inflammatory. No politics, no religion, no conspiracy theories, nothing like that. Make easy, relatable, uh, wide appeal content on social. And if you can do that, take your three products, follow the guidelines I showed you for the video and only do three of them, no more. You're probably going to get approved for on site. And it's important that you do all of those things there to a T because you only get three chances for Amazon to review your onsite. If you get three denials, you're done. You cannot get onsite. You have to start all the way over with a brand new social account, build up a social account from scratch, redo your three videos and go and you get three more tries. But if you do everything right the first time, you'll probably get approved on the first shot. The only thing I might add to give yourself that extra layer of security is don't upload your three videos until you have about 200 followers on social media. It's going to be a human that goes in and looks at your account and a human that sees a follower with six might not necessarily see influencer material. So they might deny the on-site even though all your content is good and your reviews are perfect. They might just see six followers and go, hmm, they're not ready yet. And once you've done that, you are past the hardest part of Amazon Influencer Program. The whole approval process from start to on-site, I've seen people go through it in 30 days or less. Some people will take as much as 60 days, but once you get past that, the hard part is behind you. Next, we're gonna talk about what comes after the approval. Now, once you get past the on-site approval process, Amazon Influencer becomes a volume game if you want to make any kind of real money with the program. Sadly, you cannot make a lot of money with this if you only make 20 or 30 different product reviews. Realistically, if you want to pull five to $10,000 a month out of the Amazon Influencer Program, you need to make at least 400 videos, but your goal should be to make 1,000 review videos. Now, I know it sounds like a lot, 
but it goes quick, especially when you consider what's actually eligible to be reviewed on Amazon. And that includes any item that is available to be sold on Amazon, regardless of where it was bought. So if you have things that you might've bought at Walmart or you bought at the mall or you bought at the retailer, something you bought in person, it could have been something that was gifted to you five or 10 years ago. And if it's currently sold on Amazon, you can review it and you can earn a commission on that particular product. And to show you just how many items you can actually review, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my phone, go through my office and find all of the stuff that is available to review. And hopefully my video editor is gonna keep a running tally in one of the corners of the screen. So for this segment of the video, we're actually gonna start with the clothes that I am wearing. Now the hat that I wear is a Richardson 112. I may have had it custom embroidered, but they sell this hat on Amazon. I can do a review of the hat. The shirt is a true classic tee, I can review that. And then my jeans are actually Wranglers. I can review those as well. So that's three that I'm wearing. You use the Carhartt hoodie that I actually wear on most of my videos. That's also available on Amazon. That is something that I can review and do a video on. Now let's just look at the camera that I've been filming most of the video on. So we've actually got the, uh, we've got the Sigma lens, that's a video. We've got the Canon M50 body, that's a video. We've got the mic that I added onto there, that's a video. Even the power adapter was a separate accessory. That could be a video as well. Then we've also got the tripod that it comes on, that's available there on Amazon as well. Now we've actually got the Ryobi drill from before, but we realized we're looking probably, I think it's five videos that we're looking at right here because we have the listing that is a set, but we can also break this up into separate videos. For instance, we've got the listing that includes just the drill. They sell this by itself. We can make a video about that. They have a listing with just the battery. We can do a listing on just the battery. We can do a little listing on just the charger and we can just do a listing on the bit accessories. So we've got five videos with potentially just one purchase if we bought the whole set. Behind me, we actually have here on the whiteboard, we've got these little, uh, little orange corners here. These are rocket beacons. That's a video itself. The erasers for the whiteboard, that's a video. We've actually got the whiteboard pen. That's another thing I can review. We've got this sort of like a stick on thing for the, to hold everything, that can be a video. Now this is a little bit risky, but I would do it because it's a tool, but I wouldn't do it as part of my first three. A little box cutter blade that I have to do my uh, unboxing videos with, I can use that as a video too. Now coming down here, the table that we built for reviews, right over here. These brackets under here, I just did a review video on them. I built that, this actually flips down. The bar stool itself that I've been using to sit on that, I can do that and review that there. And now here's my favorite, when we talk about the actual room itself. The light switch, that's also sold on Amazon. The doorknob, sold on Amazon. The door hinges, the door itself sometimes in some cases is sold on Amazon. Your entire house, go through it. Use what's called the Amazon Lens app. I'll show you this in a second. The Amazon Lens app, you can use that to see and just scan everything in your house. You'll be surprised at how many things are actually available on Amazon that you can do a review on. All right, now to use the Amazon Lens app, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our Amazon Shopping and you're gonna tap up here in the top right. We have that little like Instagram looking icon. You click that. We're now here into Amazon Lens and we'll pick a product here. We'll go ahead, we'll put it on here, hit search. And it's gonna go ahead, it's gonna search that particular product. If it is sold on Amazon, it looks like a version of it is. I might have to do some searching, but this is something that would be sold. Now we wanna look at something here that's a little bit more, uh, absolutely it's sold and I know it is. We're gonna hit the Oscar button that my kids got me. Click on that, take the picture, and look at that, there's the graphics and more. This is something that I can particularly do a video on as well. Or I've got my desk itself, it picked up the desk. Now there's actually two strategies that you can use to determine how you're gonna work through all of the stuff that's already in your house. Either you can break things down room by room or you can cherry pick the highest profitable items first. On the room by room method, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a list of all the rooms in your house, like bathroom one, bathroom two, bedroom one, bedroom two, kitchen, basement, garage, you know, list all of the rooms that are in your house. And what you're going to do then is you're gonna pick a room and literally pick up every single item in that room, scan it with the Amazon lens, and if you can find it, work that room until it's done. Then when that room is done, go to the next room and pick every single room and work through that room. The pro to this strategy is that you're never gonna miss an item, okay? Cause you're not bouncing around from room to room. You're gonna make sure that you get everything. The con to this 
is that you might have some more profitable items in other rooms that it's going to take you a little bit of time to get. But on a long enough time horizon, volume of videos beats items that you make videos on every time. So I am partial to the work it room by room method. That's what I did when I did the initial work through my house, picked up everything till it was done and put it up on my store. Now for the cherry picking method, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to familiarize yourself with the Amazon commission sheet, which I'm gonna bring on screen here. And what you're gonna do is from that list, you're gonna work the list of 4%, then walk around the house and find all the 3%, find all the 2%, and kind of work yourself there down the list. The pro to this is that you're gonna make the most money the fastest because you're working the highest commission items first. The con to it is that you might miss some items and you're gonna be bouncing from room to room and I guarantee you there's gonna be things that get missed. The other con is that you're gonna take the cream of the crop first and you're gonna start making some money and you're gonna go, do I really have to do all the other stuff? I'm already making money and you might lose your drive to get to that thousand video mark. I prefer the room by room method, but you could go the cherry pick method and work through everything in your house. That's when there's a couple of things that you can do. You can either go to friends and family's houses and start working their houses, or I have people in my community who actually go out and they rent an Airbnb for the weekend. Not because they wanna stay there and go on vacation, that's a plus, but what they do is they go look at the listing photo and they look to see what they have in that house so that they can go and review it on Amazon. And then once you've exhausted friends and family, and if you don't wanna go traveling just so that you can do reviews, you can actually start getting free products. If you don't wanna do either of those two strategies, you can always go the free product route. Let's look into see how we're gonna get free products to review on Amazon. All right, so as you start to put up videos and you start to get on site and you start to build maybe 50 or 60 videos on site, what's gonna happen is Amazon sellers are gonna start reaching out to you to review their products and they're gonna be offering free products in exchange for a review. And eventually your inbox is gonna look something like this. Now this is an older inbox that I don't really use anymore, but every single email that you see here on the screen is an Amazon seller who wants to have me do a review for them. I can just take my pick and go ahead and they'll send me pretty much anything that I want. Not necessarily the item that they're emailing me about. I can reply back and go, nah, I don't really think that works. Do you have any insert item that I really, really want? However, there's a couple of guidelines I think that you should follow when dealing with these free items and dealing with these sellers. Number one is don't work for free, okay? Unless it's a super high ticket item that you're probably gonna buy anyway, don't work for free. I actually ask for a minimum of $50 to do the video because these sellers do have the budget and they are going to pay for the video in addition to the product. And again, like I said before, ask if they have anything that you really, really want. More times than not, these sellers are going to be a part of a much larger network, a seller network. And if you have something, let's say you want a welding table, something that somebody in my community asked for. If you want a welding table, ask them, hey, I want. do you have any welding tables that I could review? They might say, you know what? I don't personally have one, but let me check with other sellers. They might have one as well, and then they can put you in touch. You'll be surprised at the amount of stuff that you can actually get from these sellers just by asking. However, I wouldn't start asking right away. Some of these sellers, you might have to do some of the kind of free crap items, widgets, trinkets. You might have to do a couple of those videos before you get to do some of the really good stuff if you're not already a big influencer. For instance, I had a, a seller who sent me some, I mean, it was kind of crap, but I wanted to test the experience. I was building a program, helping people how to do it. I wanted to kind of go through the experience. They sent me some, uh, I forget what it was. It was like an electric thermos or something, but it was something I really didn't need. It was something that I wasn't gonna use. And I said, and they weren't gonna offer me any money. So I said, sure, let me just do it. I'll make the video. Let me see if this is legit. It showed up. And then that particular seller, because I did that, you know, quote unquote crap item, they sent me a brand new ceiling fan for my bedroom. They sent me a brand new mattress, a mattress topper. They did all the LED pot lights in my bedroom. There was a bunch of stuff that I got sent because I did that initial video up front. So I wouldn't continue to do stuff for free, but again, you might wanna do a couple, maybe one or two of them there, because again, that'll open up the doors. They might send you more stuff as well as it goes on. But if you're a big enough influencer and you're posting product reviews on your social media, you might not have to do that. I do all of my reviews exclusively on Amazon, so I can't tell them, I'm gonna go promote your product to my audience. Doesn't work that like that way. I had to do some crap stuff before I could get some of the bigger stuff. But if you have, let's say a 200, 300,000 person audience and you're posting products on TikTok, you might be able to bypass the free.
But overall, this is something that's gonna start happening and it's gonna get progressively more and more, uh, you'll have more inquiries the bigger that you get on Amazon. Now, this will get overwhelming. So what I've done is I've actually built a system to help manage all of this. And that system looks something like this. Uh, this is something that I built. It goes into uh, into my software. There's a there's a page on my website that I direct Amazon sellers to, where they fill out a form, they put their name, they put the product link, they put what they're willing to pay. And what it does is it organizes all of these uh, cluttered emails into nice little boxes that I can then click and I can start dragging across to keep track of what I've responded to, what's on the way, what I'm negotiating with, and it has automations in it and it will let all of the sellers know my decisions as I go. It saves me a lot of time in writing emails to these sellers. Uh, now, I could do a whole video on this. I'd rather just send you to a link to a free course that will show you how this all works. It's, uh, it's gonna be down below here in the description. Uh, that could be, again, another half hour video. I'm gonna link you to another resource that's down there. But basically, I can go ahead here, I can click on this person's box, and it's gonna pull up, bring me the person's email, and then it's gonna tell me what they're looking to do. Like this person DM'd me over on Instagram. This came through an Instagram lead. Uh, they are looking to you know, tend to $1,000 products that need unboxing videos. And my automation basically told them to, uh, they said, I don't really check my DMs. Go click over to here. And this is going to put you into my system. And then this person here responded that they actually responded to our, uh, here it is, great, thank you so much. So they, they went in, they filled out the form. That's how they ended up on the box on the previous screen. So again, this whole system works. I can do a whole other hour video. I don't wanna make this video five hours. So again, I'll link to another free resource in the description if you wanna check this out. But this is built for Amazon sellers and this is something that I built and I'm gonna give away to you. And now let's talk about the number one method that has proved time and time again to scale this from five to $10,000 a month to I know people doing 15 to $25,000 a month with Amazon Influencer because of this particular strategy. Now I will say right up front, the strategy requires you to put money on the table. So I wouldn't start doing this until after I've exhausted my house, I've exhausted my friend's houses, and now that I've got Amazon commissions rolling in, I can then reinvest it into this particular strategy. And that strategy we're gonna talk about here is called buying with intent. So I've actually hopped on here on Amazon and to make the strategy possible, I actually have two Chrome extensions running that basically take all of the manual guesswork out of this. Those two Chrome extensions are called Fluencer Fruit and Jungle Scout. Again, I'll have links to everything, all the resources below the description of the video. So friends, let's talk about this every drop Whirlpool ice and water refrigerator filter. The number one selling item here at Tools and Home Improvement. Amazon tells me that it's the number one selling item. It's got 92,000 reviews. And Jungle Scout here, this is the orange button here, tells me they're selling 135,000 of these every single month. Fluencer Fruit, it's also gonna tell me what the video situation looks like. The overarch, the object of this strategy is find a product that is high sales volume, an upper carousel when it comes to videos, because that's where the placement is. It's gonna be all those videos right next to the product listing. And what you're also going to wanna see, there's no influencer videos. You wanna have high sales volume and be the only video. And when that happens, you're gonna get between one and 2% of the sales of that particular product. Hypothetical, let's assume that this number one selling item that there's 135,000 units a month has absolutely no videos. You could expect to see about a thousand sales a day of this particular product, $1.37 per. Person who put the first influencer video, there's four of them up there now, there's seven in the carousel. It's definitely crowded there. There's so much freaking volume. I might actually do a video myself. I might buy this particular product and do a video on it. Videos in upper carousel, you wanna see at least six and then you wanna see zero and zero. So something like this, the number two, this Merv filter. So the 20 by 20 by one. Fluencer Fruit tells us that there is no upper carousel, so all the prime placements gone, you can cut this right off the list. As you go down the list, what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna see that all the best sellers are pretty much picked over because they're the easy, low-hanging fruit, so to speak. However, what you might wanna do is if you go here into, let's find string lights. I'm gonna do this one live on the video. So we're gonna bring this one here, it's LED strip lights. We'll click on the particular category itself, click on that. And now what we're gonna do is Fluencer Fruit's gonna scrape all of these listings to see what the video situation looks like. You're gonna have to give it a second to work though. And again, you're looking, as soon as something has this little upper carousel with a check, it's good. If you see the X, that's bad. So we just wanna scroll down, look at stuff here. Look at something here. We've got 10 videos, upper carousel, five influencer videos. 
it's full. Five and five is 10, it's full. Six, five and one, full. You want to go through, you want to find something that has no influencer videos. This is a very manual way to do it. It's going to take some time, but before Fluencer Fruit came out, I would actually have to go and click and open all of these listings in a tab and look at them and then go to Jungle Scout and look at the sales volume. Having these two in particular is going to save me a ton of time. It makes it easier to find these particular high intent buys. They're out there, there's tons of them. I don't wanna give up the ones that I found for obvious reasons, but you're gonna be, and they're out there. If you find a honey hole, you can sometimes dominate a category. For instance, I bought 10 of a particular item one time at $10 a piece, and that investment of $100 has paid itself off 10 times over because it is something that people don't usually think to uh, review, and they don't think about it, and that, those are the types of things that you're gonna see. We do full workshops on this. I actually run a mastermind here. I'll leave another link down below. The link list is getting long, but I talked about a lot of resources today. Now for me, a very popular method for me, because I'm buying stuff that's all brand new, and it's a lot of the stuff that I buy is typically stuff you'll find around the house and it's home related. I found that Habitat for Humanity, the restore right around the corner from me, I've been taking all of my donations over there and they've been loving me for it. I've been showing up with boxes of stuff that's pretty much, it's all brand new. It's just an open box. And they've been selling that stuff like hotcakes and that has been a great way for me to just offload my stuff in bulk. I don't have to get cash for the item when I get rid of it because again, the missions from the videos are gonna pay for that item and then some. But if you need cash, an easy way to do it is to go on Facebook Marketplace, list it on Facebook Marketplace. You'll probably get 25 to 40% of the item's price if it's a desirable item. So for me, I found it better to just take all the stuff and I just took it out as a donation. I already took the write-off when I bought it because uh, I bought it specifically for the purposes of renewing it. So that's what I've been doing. I've been going to the restore and donating it there, or you can just sell the stuff over there on Marketplace. It's totally up to you. All right, coming into the home stretch here, I told you this was gonna be a 100% no holds barred video. But the last thing I wanna go over here is two, actually there's two things I wanna go over here according to my notes. First one is gonna be all of the special creator programs that Amazon throws at you periodically. The first one's a standing program that you have to apply to to get in, but I've never seen anyone get denied unless they stopped posting on their social media, which is why you always need to keep social media active. Uh, the first one is Creator Connections. It's a standing program, it's always there. And to access that, we're gonna jump in my computer, right over here into my Amazon store. Uh, you're gonna go to your Amazon store and you're gonna see C Reporting up top. You're gonna click on that. It's gonna bring you into your back office and make sure you're over here. Your store ID is going to be the off Amazon store ID. And then over here on the promotions tab, you're gonna go to Creator Connections. And what this is, you're gonna have to apply, set up a profile. Again, they're gonna look at your socials again. But what this does is this gives you standing uh, promotions for things to earn really high commissions on. For instance, we have this rocket book and what's gonna happen, it's gonna give me a special link here for this rocket book and I'm gonna get paid 15%, was it 15%? There it is, it's 10%. So what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna have to sell the rocket book for 10%. So since I have a YouTube video on this going pretty well right now, all I have to do to actually get this, I just need to tell Amazon where the, um, I already have the associate link on the product. All I have to do is tell them where that URL is for that YouTube video. So all I have to do is go paste my YouTube video URL there, hit submit, and that's gonna bump my commission from the 2% that it normally is to the 10% for the limited time of the creator connections that's there. Now again, you can see I've accepted other ones this month. Uh, this was a trunk organizer that I did. I did not actively promote it. I just put the, uh, I put the link in my YouTube video. I earned an extra $170 for that particular promotion. So as you can see back here in January, I went through. It was free money they gave to me. I already had the video up. It was already promoting the product. I swapped out the link and they gave me an extra 170 bucks, which I thought was pretty cool. Now, the other type of promotion that they run periodically, they don't have a name to it, but you'll get one. The latest one was this or that, or there was an Amazon Inspire Challenge where they will pay you for a certain number of videos. They were paying you up to $12,000 as a creator. If you made, I think the math worked out to $25 per video. I think it was 500 videos. We'll check my math on that one, but it's, it's basically every once in a while, every quarter, every half, a promotion like that's gonna come around. You check your email inbox for it. If it shows up, you accept it, and you make the, the videos that they want and you submit the videos, you're gonna get paid per video. But that's just about everything there is to know on the Amazon Influencer Program. This, hopefully this has been informative to you. I've told you the step-by-step -step how to get approved and then how to find qualifying items to review. I've given you the framework 
on what to say in your videos. But if you do want to mastermind with this and join my community of almost a thousand people, there's actually a link down below. We meet twice a month. We talk about strategies. We talk about the system to manage the sellers. We actually have the founder of Fluencer Fruit is in our group. Uh, she makes an appearance every now and then. So uh, yeah, join us. So we have a community again. There's gonna be more, uh, there's gonna be a link down in the description for everything mentioned in the video, but also check out the mastermind so we can help you move it further as an Amazon influencer. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up button. That helps the algorithm, helps more people see it. And I will see you in another video.